Welcome to Surf Fishing 101. Today we're going to be discussing bucktail and it's one of those episodes where we're going to have a specific strategy where you're going to see us doing a specific thing with the, with the lure. We have another episode where we're using uh, needlefish in rough water to get over the bar when we can't use any other plugs. Today we're just going to be discussing using bucktails in rough water and then at the end of the episode we got John Skinner kind of going in general sense talking to you about bucktails. Bucktails have grown very much in recent years. They used probably popularized by John's book, Fishing with Bucktails. He's the leading expert on it and always worth listening to. Uh, we shot about 10 minutes worth of GoPro footage. I'm going to apologize ahead of time for the sound quality of the GoPro, but as if any of you know who uses a GoPro, the sound is horrendous. However, it's better than me just talking over the action. So look at this action for about 10 minutes. I'm trying to talk as I'm fishing and trying to explain what exactly I'm doing. And then John Skinner will go over the bucktails. Uh, we're going to have another episode where we're going to go in, use the bucktails in a, in a jetties, use the bucktails in a moderate surf. But this particular episode will deal with using bucktails in a rough surf on a sandy beach. It's October and we're fishing some rough water on the Long Island beach. The season hasn't been that great, but there has been some fish showing up lately. Why am I fishing here and getting beat up? Well, generally, the roughest conditions you can find on a stretch of the beach the most chance you got of hooking a fish. Fishing is always about structure. Always. Structure, waves, wind, current. All that good stuff and bait. But on the end of the day, everything relates to the structure. I'm throwing an ounce and a half bucktail with a red and white pork rind. And I'm just working these waves right here. Now, if you look, I'm gonna take, turn my head and you'll see that the rest of the beach is kind of calm, except for this one spot that I'm in, which is rough as hell. And there's a uh, remnants of a hurricane going by. So you got quite a bit of a swell here. Why am I here? Well, because the fish have the most advantage right in this spot. When a bait gets trapped into this water, they can navigate it. But bass and blues have no issues. Never cast in front of the wave. Try to get a cast behind it. That way you can work your bucktail right away. They just Nice and easy twitch. And I'm in. I'm in. And I just plainly love catching fish on bucktails. If for no other reason that the unhooking process is so simple. You don't have to deal with trebles, especially when you're fishing in rough water like this. You just gotta grab your bucktail, stick a hand in his mouth, pop it out. Although, from the looks of it, these fish are not that big. I'm going his way. So basically the trick is to find a bucktail of right size. You don't want to be dredging the bottom and you don't want to be going too high. I just thought I had a bump. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not 100% sure. But, but like what I was saying, the trick to fishing a bucktail is finding the right size. I find that one ounce on a calm condition is usually great, three quarter to one. 
You got a little rough, ounce and a half to two. Right now I'm using ounce and a half, magic tail, bucktail. With our Uncle Josh 240S pork rind. And you just want to glide above the bottom. Don't forget, you got a lot of waves in here. So when the water is, when the wave comes up, your bucktail rides a lot higher. And when the wave goes down, you know, you got a little bit less of a water. So you kind of got to adjust for that when you're casting. And when you're working it too. A lot of times in the wave, when I feel that my bucktail is inside the wave, I will slow it down, let the wave pass it, and then pick up that retrieve afterwards. There's a lot of there's a lot of little things when it comes to bucktail. Shape, size, color, trailer, you name it. But for the most part, the weight will be the overriding factor. If you're going to catch a fish or not, I just had a nice bump I missed. Uh, what you want to do is, you want to get a bucktail that's going to go close to the bottom. You get casted into the wind, but you don't want anything that's going to drag on the bottom on a regular slow retrieve. You don't want to be cranking a bucktail like an idiot. That's usually better for albies than it is for bass. So most of the time on a beach, in a calm water, three quarter an ounce to an ounce is good. When the water's a little rougher, about an ounce and a half. Keep missing these fish, I don't know why. Ounce and a half to two ounces, two ounces being a little bit on the heavier side. You really need that during big storms. I find an ounce and a half in this particular conditions, it's perfect. Come on, fishy, fishy. Come on, fishy. Come play with me. Come on, fishy. I expect to get hit right about there. There you go. Just as I called it. Once you've been doing this for a while, you're going to have certain expectations of when do you want or when do you expect the head to come. Really, I mean, it's not exaggeration. You should know that certain part of the waves are better than others. You're rarely ever going to get a hit on a receding wave and most often on the incoming wave. So those are all little things. There's a little guy. I'm using an ounce and a half, like I said, magic tail, bucktail, with a red and white pork rind. I use red and white pork rind most of the time. I would say 99% of the time. Um, it's a big confidence thing. It's really not. Whoa, missed another fish. Wow. Wow, another one. Maybe I'm just exaggerating for the camera. What do you think? Yeah. I need to exercise to try to set the hook. You see that receding wave right now? And I'm not getting any hits. The water just going suck back in the ocean. And the bass just went with it. And this is exactly what I was telling you before. Most of the hits will come on the incoming wave, not on the receding wave. That's why it's key to work right behind that wave right there. That's the key. Just work it. You almost want this bucktail to become an extension of your hand. I just wish these fish were bigger, but hey, like Vito said, take what C gives you, don't complain. I know that the GoPro really, really makes this crazy water in front of me looks very tiny. I am aware of it. I hate it. But that's just the way it is with the wide angle lenses. It tends to look 
tends to make everything look so tiny. But trust me, these fish do not need a camera to make them look smaller than they are. Not a bad fish, right? Beautiful looking. And that is basically what I wanted to show you. There's no mystery to this. It's just a matter of picking the right bucktail, working it properly, and making sure that you're in the right column, in the right part of the wave. I do know that this takes a little bit of experience, but I always said, when you get proficient with a bucktail, I swear to you, it's like having an extension of your hand. It's like that bucktail fluttering out there, like your hand, and you can almost I'm not going to say you're going to feel the hit, but you're going to anticipate these hits before they happen. Let's try one more cast before we turn the camera off and I get to actually fish. Here we go. Well, I hope you enjoy that. So for choosing bucktails, if you had nothing else but smiling bill heads, you'd be just fine, all right? So, you know, there's the one thing. And then the other thing, the big mistake I see is most anglers um, that are inexperienced with bucktails, they go too heavy. So the, the things to think about are um, the water depth, uh, the sweep or current, and, and the waves. And um, if you think about, like, these open beaches here, your longest cast with a bucktail, if you're going to hit 12 feet of water, that's a deep spot, at least for these Long Island beaches. A lot of times, you're casting into much less water than that, you know, maybe six to eight feet, and uh, sometimes less than that. So I want to, uh, my objective that I've written about a thousand times and talked about is to swim the bucktail near the bottom on a slow to moderate retrieve. And I know that if I'm casting into eight feet of water and I have very little current and just moderate wave action, yeah, three quarters to one ounce is going to do the job. Now, in the inlets, that's a lot more technical. And you know, you're dealing with depth, uh, deeper water, stronger current. But again, you get a feel for it. And you know, one thing you can do if you go to a spot, you're not familiar with it, you know, make a cast and then feel how long it takes that jig to settle to the bottom. You know, if it takes 15 seconds to settle to the bottom, well, you may be not going to be able to fish there. It's so deep. If it settles to the bottom and like, you know, eight seconds or so, yeah, okay, yeah, that's not too bad. And that gives you an idea of how deep it is. And then from there in the inlets, you know, most of the time you're in that two to four ounce range. A lot of times you're in the two to three ounce range. Um, you know, and again, it's about hitting that objective of swimming it close to the bottom, slow to moderate retrieve.